Hey guys, welcome to AKD Tech. So today, Apple just unveiled the iPad Mini and the iPad Air upgrade silently, and they're actually a lot different from what I imagined, and one of them is a really big surprise. So let's check it out. Now, the iPad Air release was definitely a surprise to me, not only because I didn't expect it, but also because it's so much more premium than I thought it would be. Now, first of all, it keeps the old design, so it's got that old home button, it's got the thick bezels around, and it also has the headphone jack, which is a good thing, right? In 2019 especially. But forgetting about that, we also get a laminated display, which is very similar to the one you see on the iPad Pro. You just don't get the ProMotion display, obviously. It's also got a 10-hour battery life, which is boring, but let's get to the exciting part. Now, this does have an A12 Bionic chip, so it's got plenty power in it, so it, it can do pretty much everything that an iPad Pro can, just a little bit slower, maybe. And it supports Apple Pencil Generation 1, which I really hate, and that's, you know, honestly a weird thing that they would add it again this year. I would have preferred it to be a little bit more expensive for that new charging solution. And things just get weirder from here because it's basically the same iPad Pro 10.5 inch with a different display, which just doesn't make sense to me. It's got the Apple Pencil Generation 1 support, it's got an Apple Smart Keyboard now, and not the Folio one, which is awesome, but instead it has the old one with the weird origami thing that everyone hated so much. And not only that, it's priced at $479, so it's pretty much just below the 10.5 inch Pro model. And if you add the keyboard, that's another $159, and then you have to add the pencil, which is a $99 value, and pretty much it adds up to pretty much a pro level iPad again, which really doesn't make sense because it's an iPad Air, not the Pro 10.5 inch. I will discuss this more in detail at the end, so stick around for that. Okay, so the iPad mini upgrade, finally, right? We've been waiting for this upgrade for a long time. And it's super light and tiny, it's 0.66 pounds, that's why everyone loved it. And we finally got an upgrade, it's got the A12 Bionic chip as well, which is ridiculous for a tiny device. It's ridiculously powerful. And what's cool is that it's also got the same design with the headphone jack, so you're not going to miss that. And it's got Apple Pencil support, which is, I think, absolutely ridiculous on a device so tiny. It's almost as if Apple's pointing towards a Apple Pencil for maybe the iPhone? But who knows? I think it's cool that, that all the iPads have Apple Pencil support now, so the Apple Pencils become pretty much a, a part of the iPad. And moving on, this has also got the same 10 hour battery life, so that seems to be a trend with Apple now. That's fantastic. And the pricing though is a little bit painful. It's $399 right now, so I don't know if that's a good idea to buy instead of something like the iPad from last year or the iPad Air that just came out. Now here's my problem with the new iPad releases. So Apple seems to be creating that same pyramid they created with the MacBooks, which made it so confusing. So on the bottom of the MacBook line, you have the MacBook, then you have the MacBook Air, then you have the base level MacBook Pro, and then you have the newer MacBook Pro with Touch Bar, which got upgraded. So it's a whole bunch of messes combined, making it ridiculous to buy a lower end MacBook Pro. And so here's the same thing for the iPad lineup. You have the iPad for education with Apple Pencil support. You have the new iPad mini, which is pretty good. It's got Apple Pencil support as well. It's just a smaller screen. It's pretty expensive. And then on top of that, you also have the iPad 10.5, the Air, which just came out today. And it's good. It's just that it's also the same thing pretty much as the iPad Pro 10.5 inch by Apple. And on top of that, you have the 11 inch and the 12.9 inch Pros, which are definitely a separate category. So that's not really a problem. If you're looking into buying these devices, I definitely recommend that you get the iPad Air over the educational iPad simply because it's just so much better of a device. It'll last longer and it'll work a lot nicer than the old educational iPad. Now this time around, the pricing seems a little bit odd as well. We're looking at $399 for the mini, as I said before, and that's a little bit on the high side, but adding in the iPad Pencil, you're going to be looking at around 500 bucks. So that's pretty expensive. So it's a little bit in a weird territory, especially since the iPad for education from last year is just so much more inexpensive than this iPad mini. And then you have the iPad Air, which is pretty much the same thing as the iPad Pro 10.5 inch, but just, you know, a little bit lesser in terms of the display and stuff. So should you get the iPad Pro or should you rather get the iPad Air? Well, it's a little bit complicated because the iPad Air actually comes out to around $831 with all the keyboard, 
uh, the Apple Pencil, Apple Care, and this is with the base model, so 64 gigs, Wi-Fi only, and that's a pretty steep price. Now compared to the iPad Pros, it's, you know, it's close, but not quite that close. So if you are looking into higher processing speeds, then definitely go for the iPad Pro. But if you're looking at something a little bit less, then the iPad Air is definitely a good purchase. So anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and yeah, I'll catch you in the next video.